Hey everybody, I'm Tanner Ritchie. Do you own a house or are you thinking about purchasing a house? If so, there's a high likelihood that you either have a mortgage now or will have one in the future. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to save 15 to 20% on your mortgage interest over the life of your loan while also paying it off four to five years quicker. Mortgages are a great thing. Without them, roughly 77% of people who own a home in America wouldn't have been able to purchase their house due to the high upfront cost. They allow you to buy an asset worth hundreds of thousands of dollars and possibly even millions of dollars while only having to put a small percentage of, or pay a small percentage upfront as low as three and a half percent and sometimes even less. That being said, mortgages come at a cost. Over the life of a 30-year fixed loan, you will likely pay 70 to 100% of your original loan amount in mortgage interest. And this is in addition to paying back the original amount you borrowed. For example, let's say you purchase a home for $625,000 and put 20% down. Your loan amount will be $500,000. If the interest rate on your loan is 5% and the loan term is 30 years, then after 30 years of paying off your mortgage, you will have paid a whopping $466,000 in interest. In this example, it has in essence cost you $466,000 to borrow $500,000. Now before you throw up your hands and say, that's it, I'm not gonna purchase, it's too expensive, keep in mind that if you had rented for those same 30 years, and your rent payment just so happened to be the exact same as your mortgage payment and didn't change for those 30 years, you would be out $966,000, out. It's gone, money you would never see again. But fast forward 30 years, and since you made that great decision 30 years ago to purchase a house, and your home has had 2% year over year appreciation over those 30 years, that $625,000 home is now worth $1,132,000. Congrats, you may have spent $466,000, but you now have an asset that you own free and clear that you could sell for $1,132,000, or you could keep and rent and get some great passive income, or you could enjoy the house and only have to pay taxes and insurance at this point. But I digress, this is not a rent versus buy video. This is a video about how to shrink that $466,000 price tag that was needed to borrow $500,000. All I ask is that if you do enjoy this video, please like it, it really helps the YouTube algorithm. And if you're watching on Facebook or another platform, I also appreciate a like there and feel free to comment with your questions. So how do we lower that $466,000 price tag? Start off, we have to talk a little bit more about how a mortgage actually works. A mortgage is a loan that is used to finance your home purchase in which the house itself is collateral. So that means if you don't make your mortgage payments, then the bank does have a right to your home. They can repossess your home and sell it to get their money back out of it. So based on your mortgage amount, your interest rate and the loan term, which for the examples today, we're just keeping it to a 30 year fixed rate loan to keep everything simple. But over those 30 years, the loan will be fully amortized. That's just a fancy way of saying that you will be making periodic payments that are the same amount. And once the loan term is finished, you will have paid everything in full. Now all of your mortgage payments will be broken down into two sections. You have your principal payment and you have your interest payment. Think of your principal payment as paying back the money that you originally borrowed. So let's say your original mortgage was for $500,000 and you make a $1,000 principal payment. Then your new outstanding principal balance would be $499,000. The other section is your interest payment. And think of your interest payment as the fee you're paying to have borrowed that money in the first place. All right, I'm gonna to try to keep this next part simple. I'm gonna do my best. As I mentioned before, your mortgage payment will stay the same throughout the course of your loan. Although, the amount of that mortgage payment that is going towards principal and going towards interest are different. That's because with the way amortization works, when you start paying a loan, more money is going towards the interest of the loan and less is going to the principal balance. The reason is that you are always paying interest based on the outstanding principal balance of that loan. As that principal balance lowers, the amount that you're paying in interest lowers because there's less of a principal balance to pay interest on. So with every single payment, 
a larger portion of that money is going towards the principal balance, which means you are building more equity in your home the longer you are paying that mortgage. All right, let's look at another example. And we're gonna keep with the numbers from the first example to keep this easy. If you take out a loan for $500,000 at a 5% interest rate for a 30 year term, your mortgage payment will be roughly $2,684 for the life of the loan. Keep in mind that we are only talking about principal and interest for these examples. A lot of times in the real estate field, when we say your payment, we are talking about PITI, which is principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. For these examples, we are only talking about principal and interest uh, just to keep everything simple. Anyway, your mortgage payment based on the above example is $2,684. Since your beginning outstanding balance is $500,000, your first interest payment is based off of this number. Your first payment of $2,684 will be broken down as follows. Interest, $2,083, and principal, $601. In case you're curious, the way you can break down how much you're paying in interest for a payment is simply by multiplying your outstanding principal balance by your interest rate, then divide by 12. In this example, $500,000 times 0 0.05, which is your interest rate, equals $25,000. Now divide that by 12, and it equals $2,083 and some change. Now, if we compare that to the first payment of year 20, you'll notice a significant difference. Your outstanding principal balance is now only $272,098. Your payment is still $2,684, of course, although now your payment will be broken down as follows. Interest. $1,134, principal $1,550. Interest was calculated the exact same way in this scenario. Your outstanding principal balance of $272,098 is multiplied by the interest rate of 5%, 0.05, which equals 13,605. Divide that by 12 and you get 1,134. As you'll see, more of the payment is going towards your remaining principal balance than interest at this time. So now that you have a basic understanding of how mortgages and mortgage payments work, and you're probably sleeping, it is time to wake up, because we're getting to the fun part, which is saving money. Paying off your mortgage four to five years sooner and saving 15 to 20% on the interest over the life of your loan stems from an idea of bi-weekly payments. In a more common scenario, you would make 12 mortgage payments throughout the course of a year, which makes sense because we have 12 months. The thing is that there are 52 weeks in a year, which means if you were to make one half of a mortgage payment every two weeks, you would make 26 half mortgage payments in a year, which equates to 13 full mortgage payments, which would be an extra payment for the entire year. Now, this is an interesting idea. It allows you to save money in the long run, and there are mortgage companies that offer bi-weekly payment programs. The issue is that they aren't offered everywhere, and some bi-weekly payment programs have added fees. This kind of defeats the whole purpose of saving money on your mortgage interest. Not to mention, you are then committed to making one half of a mortgage payment every two weeks instead of one full mortgage payment each month, which depending on your financial situation might be a bit of a stretch as you are now making one full extra payment per year. So this might not be something you wanna to commit to for the entirety of your loan. Instead of biweekly payments, I would recommend taking the core idea of that strategy and implementing it into a more common 12 mortgage payment per year plan. In fact, you can expect a similar result through adding an additional principal payment to your mortgage payment each month. In essence, you are paying back the money that you borrowed at a faster rate. You will wanna double check with your lender to ensure that they allow additional principal payments and that there is no prepayment penalty. But in my experience, most lenders allow it. So in essence, you're gonna be making one and one twelfth of a mortgage payment every month. You'll make your normal mortgage payment as usual and you will put that extra one twelfth of a payment all towards the outstanding principal balance of your loan. If you're paying your mortgage online or, or even on paper, a lot of times you'll see an extra box that says additional principal, and that's where you would write in the extra amount. So if your normal mortgage payment is $2,684, then you would be shooting for $2,908, which is an extra $224 that you'll be putting towards the outstanding principal balance of your loan each month. So this method will admittedly take a bit more self-discipline than the bi-weekly payment method, just based on the fact that you're not gonna receive a mortgage every two weeks, uh, excuse me, mortgage statement every two weeks saying you need to pay. But what you can do is when you get your paycheck, 
just take a little bit more, put it to the side, so that way you have that extra 1 12th of a payment ready to go when the time comes. Also, I do wanna note that making an additional principal payment is not going to lower your future payments. So if your current payment is $2,684, even if you make an additional principal payment of $10,000, next month's statement is still gonna be $2,684. So the payment won't lower, but what you have done is moved yourself from this point in your timeline of paying back your loan to this point. You basically moved yourself up the timeline, which means that you won't have to pay as much interest at the end of the day, and you won't have to pay your mortgage as long. So let's look at some examples. With each example, we are looking at a mortgage amount of $500,000 with a 30-year term. What we are changing with each example is the interest rate. Keep in mind that a higher interest rate equals a higher mortgage payment, which in turn means the higher the interest rate on your loan, the more you will save by employing this method and the faster you will pay off your mortgage. So at a 4% interest rate, you will pay $359,348 in interest over the life of your loan. With an extra 112th payment per month, you will save $55,681 over the course of 30 years. You will also pay off your loan four years, one month sooner. That is 15.5% savings in interest paid. That's a BMW 340i in savings. At a 5% interest rate for the same $500,000, you will have paid $466,279 in interest over the life of your loan. With an extra 112th payment per month, you will save $84,933 over the course of your loan term. You will also pay off your loan four years, eight months sooner. That is an 18.2% savings in interest paid. That would equate to a BMW M550i with some features added. At a 6% interest rate, which is high right now, but historically not out of the question, you will have paid $579,191 in interest over the life of your loan. With an extra 112th payment per month, you will save $122,846 over the course of your loan term. You will also pay off your loan five years, five months sooner. That is 21.2% savings in interest paid. That is a loaded BMW 750i with the executive package and much, much more. Zero to 60 in 3.9 seconds and back to real estate. Now, before you shake your fist at the screen and say, Tanner, that's great, I just need to make more money to be able to do that. How am I supposed to make one whole extra mortgage payment per year? I don't make enough money. You know what? I get it. I'm not going to tell you to stop enjoying the, the little things you love in life. That Starbucks. Everybody needs some Starbucks once in a while. That avocado toast once in a while. The point of this video isn't so much to tell you that you need to make an extra mortgage payment every year or that you need to make even one twelfth of a mortgage payment each month. It's more to highlight the concept of making additional principal payments and how much money it can save you in the long run and the fact that you can pay off your mortgage sooner. You by no means have to make that large of a contribution each month and you don't have to do it every month. If you want to spend an extra $50, $100 one month, it still makes a difference. And if you want to play with this more yourself, I'm including a mortgage calculator down below that lets you play with different additional payment amounts just to see how much money it could save you in the long run. Last but not least, whether or not this is a smart strategy for you really comes down to your own personal situation. Prior to putting extra funds towards your mortgage, I would recommend making sure you've paid off all your high interest credit card debt. You also wanna make sure that your emergency fund is adequate and you'll have to weigh the opportunity cost of investing those funds into another avenue that might have a high return. Also, you wanna think about how long you're gonna be in the house. If you're only gonna be there for a few years, then it might not be worth uh, implementing the strategy. But if it's gonna be your forever home and you're gonna be there for 30 plus years, then it could very well save you a great deal of money. Well, that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for staying with me till the end. I hope it wasn't a snooze fest. I know there were a lot of numbers thrown around. Don't be afraid to hit the like button and comment with other videos you'd like to see from my channel. I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 o